Pastor Cody, the children and family pastor here at Journey. We want to make it easy for kids to find and experience God by creating services for every age. If you have students from age zero through fifth grade, we invite them to join us in Journey Kids. For those of you joining us online, we have online services for all ages. You can find these at jrnykids.com. And for our in-person services, you can find one of our Journey Kid volunteers to help safely register your students for their service. We cannot wait to meet you and your family. If it's your first time with us or your 100th time, welcome. We're excited to hang with you. Service starts in about six minutes. So grab yourself a snack or a coffee, sit back, and let this trumpet take you away. church where you shout, dance, run, um, the whole nine. Almost every day I would have to read St. John 3.16, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believed in him should not perish but everlasting life. So I knew Jesus died for me and I knew I had to obey my parents. That was my recipe for living. Um, so I just kind of carried that into my adulthood. As long as I went to church, that was norm normal for me. I was good. So I reached out to God, you know, when there's a crisis or a natural disaster, because you know when there's a natural disaster, you just think Jesus is coming back in that moment. So you just want to make sure you're good. But if I'm honest, I didn't mean it. I still wanted to do me. I still thought I was good. But I knew God loved me. I knew he had a plan for me. I just wasn't ready to surrender my life to him at that moment. Then out of the blue, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. My fiance, he decides to give his life to the Lord um, and he gets saved. And I know that's not a bad thing, but that means I became second in his life. And to this day, he has never been the same. So I saw Jesus working in his life and that was a testament to me. And then my job closed down. I lost my car. I lost my apartment. So I had to move back home. While being back home, my mother told us about this church that we should visit, um, and we did. And at the end of the sermon, the pastor looked at me, and he just said, are you ready? I knew exactly what he meant, because I had just been feeling exhausted. And when he asked me that, without hesitation, I just screamed, yes. I felt like this fight on the inside of me had immediately come to an end. I knew I was exhausted um, because I knew I was ignoring God. Um, I didn't want to really get into God's word anymore because I knew the word, but I didn't want the word to challenge how I was living and how I was doing. But when I said yes, like that fight, it was just, it just became so easy. It's funny how things come full circle. As I look back over my childhood, I just see how everything was working to my good. Not that I've made it to this place, but how, you know, all the prayer, all of what I thought was religious rhetoric in my birthday cards or, you know, people praying for me. It's amazing how all of that just comes full circle and even now how I like to pray for others that they may experience this peace that I know. There's not one person in this world that can tell me anything about my God to make me want to not trust him and to not believe him. You know, forgiveness is so powerful. You know, the peace, the benefits of forgiveness uh, is just so free and so powerful. This is a day by day thing. And just trusting God just day by day. When it's hard, um, when things are not making sense. You know, he's such a gentle father and Growing up how I grew up with, um, with a lot of rules, I didn't know God to be gentle. But he's such a gentle father. And Jesus is such an amazing savior. You know, he still died. And that's what continues to just make me fall in love with him all over again. You know, even the sins that I will commit tomorrow knowing that Jesus still died for me and I can always go back and ask him to forgive me.
morning, Journey Church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We are excited to see you here. If you can, would you stand with us while we worship our risen King today? Amen.
sitting in, the beautiful band, the singers, stage. It's not what this is talking about when we say all this is for you. It's all this is for you. Yep. This is what he wants the most. Paul says, Paul says, I come to you knowing absolutely nothing but Christ and him crucified. I give it all up to you, Jesus. I give it all up to you, Jesus, no matter my education, no matter my problems, no matter my money, my bank statements, the cars, the house, it means nothing if you're not in my life. Let's sing that again. Let's, let's bring it back together. Let's sing with all of this. We want you, Jesus, with all of this. Let's sing it again. to the Father through you. Thank you, Jesus, because you lived the life that we were not able to accomplish. You accomplished all the laws. And you died a death that we deserved on a cross that was ours. And you resurrected for us, Lord God, allowing us to never have to bear shame and the weight of sin. And we thank you that we can worship you that we can praise you, that we can give you all of us. I can give you all of me, Jesus. And as long as I give you all of me, that is sufficient for you. That's all you want, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to worship your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, church. My name is Eric Reyes. This is my wife, Lisi. You all can have a seat. Give a hand to the band and the worship team. We're just so appreciative that you all are here. Thank you for those of you online joining us as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, my name is Eric Reyes. This is my wife, Lisi. We want to say thank you and welcome. In just a few moments, Pastor Kevin's going to come up and share a message with us to celebrate Easter. But before he does that, we just want to welcome you. If this is your first time, we are excited that you're here with us in the front or right in front of you in the seat back of your pack. Oh my gosh, I did this first service. I can't get it right. There's a QR code. <laughs> right in front of you. Just scan it with your phone if you're here to fill out the connect card or online. There's a link in the chat. We'd love to get to know you. Don't just come in and out. We want to get to know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, along with that QR code that's in front of you, um, if you follow that link, you're able to give uh, your first fruits and your kingdom builders. As a church, that's one thing we highly believe in because that's what gets the gospel forward. Um, or at least, I'm sorry, that's what helps gets the gospel forward. So if you would just follow that QR code, give online. For those of you online, you can follow jrnychurch.com slash give, or you can just drop the money in the uh, boxes that we have out in the lobby. So in a few minutes, we're going to have Pastor Kevin come up and deliver an amazing and powerful word. But before that, we're just going to watch a short video. Again, welcome and happy Easter. Y feliz día de Pascua. Everybody. Uh, thanks for being here today. Just on behalf of Journey, uh, Jolene and I, uh, super pleased to have you here in the house today celebrating your Easter weekend with us. Also online at home, uh, thanks for being with us today as well. Um, I, I love, they still here? Yeah, I love you guys. You can never do anything wrong. Um, Eric and Lisi, um, their hearts and passion for Jesus are just right out there on their, in the front of them, on their shoulders, and um, I love that about you. So thank you. Uh, they are also super cool, aren't they? <laughs> Matching and everything. I have never been that cool one day in my entire life, so um, I, I love those guys. We're kicking off a series today uh, for the whole month of April called Doorways. Uh, so all through the month of April, we're going to be talking about doorways in the Bible. So I would invite you back uh, to that all month long. So it, since it's about doorways, I, I just have to, okay? I just have to. Um, why does a chicken coop only have two doors? Because if it had four doors, it'd be a chicken sedan. <laughs> when is a door not a door? When it's a jar. I'm here all week, friends. So come back and I'm here all week. So uh, our Journey Kids ministry at all of our campuses are on the big idea this month, meaning that Whatever we're talking about, they're also talking about. They're doing it in child-appropriate kinds of ways. And so uh, when you pick up your child, if you have one in Journey Kids today, they're going to be, have, <coughs> they'll have this in their hand. So it's a key, so you get the, the connection to the door. But it's an opportunity uh, for you to have a conversation with them about what you 
uh, talked about here and what they talked about there. And it's just an, a connection point uh, for you to have a Jesus kind of conversation with, with your kids, so I invite you to. We have all had good experiences with doors, and we've all had bad experiences with doors, I'm guessing. Uh, about two weeks ago, this is super recent, uh, Jolene and I went to Minneapolis to visit our children and our grandchildren. And we left about noon on a Wednesday. And so on Thursday, early evening, uh, about 30 hours later, we got a call from, or no, we saw on our ring security that the Amazon person had left uh, some boxes on our front step. So we didn't really want them to be there for another four or five days outside. So we called a friend and said, hey, would you go over to the house and would you just take the boxes inside for us? So she said yes. And so she went over. We got a call from her said, I'm standing outside your, I see the box, I'm standing outside your house at the door, but your front door is wide open. And nobody's been there for 30 hours. And she said, I'm kind of afraid to go inside. And I said, yeah, don't go inside. You know, I, nobody should be there, right? I said, nobody should be in the house at all. And so I called our neighbor who is in law enforcement. And I said, hey, would you mind going over and just checking the house? So we saw him on the ring security as well. He's walking into our house with a flashlight in one hand and a gun in the other. And he went through all the floors and looked under all the beds, looked in all the closets. He called me and he said, hey, Kevin, there's nobody, there's nobody here. I said, okay, I'm, I'm thankful for that. And then it dawned on me that when we had packed the car at noon on Wednesday, I had taken the luggage out through the front door, put it in the car, but then I'd gone back in the house through the garage door. And then when we backed out, we didn't even notice the door was open. So it was open all night long, Wednesday night uh, and Thursday. And so that was a little bit alarming to me. I was really wor more worried about than people. I was more worried about four-legged things in my house. Uh, but so I'm, I'm setting mouse traps now all throughout the house. Uh, but anyway, that, here, here's what Jesus said about that. No, not about the squirrels. But he said, I am the door. He is the door. He said, if anyone enters by me the door... He will be saved and, and will go in and out and find pasture, or in other words, find rest and find comfort and find provision. The thief, your enemy, the devil, comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came, Jesus said, I came that you might have life, but not just life, you might have life abundantly. So today we celebrate the biggest event the world has ever known. It is bigger, what we celebrate today is bigger than the construction of the pyramids, it is bigger than... Uh, the Reformation or the Renaissance. It is bigger than the, than the rise and fall of the Greek and Roman civilizations. It is bigger than Buddhism, Hinduism, or Islam. It is bigger than 9-11. It is bigger than the pandemic of 2020. In fact, it is even bigger than the ongoing rivalry between the Packers and the Bears. It is bigger than that, friends. Uh, it is the biggest event the world has ever known that we celebrate today, uh, the resurrection of Jesus. In fact, his life splits history. That's how big it is. Even if you're not a follower of Christ here in the room today, you honor it in some way because his life and his death are what your calendar is about. It's B.C. and A.D. His life is part of that. And the reason I'm here today and the reason that you're here today and the reason that three billion people around the world are worshiping Jesus today is because a dead man walked out of the grave alive again. That's what we celebrate today and that's why we're here. And that is good news. And this is where it gets super personal, because Romans chapter 6 says, we, we were buried with Christ by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. That means if we receive Jesus into our life, and if we decide to follow him, then when we die, and one day you will die because the mortality rate is 100%, then we will begin a new life eternal life, the Bible says, with Jesus because he paid for our sins on a cross. He willingly walked to a cross to be crucified for you and for me because he loved you. And when he walked out of a tomb alive, he conquered death, hell, and the grave forever. And you and I can have that new life present tense now. And that's what we are praying for every single person in this room today. Because here's what I know about you and here's what I know about me. There is a gap between the life we have now and the life we could have. There's a gap. Those could be financial gaps. Those could be marital gaps. They could be physical gaps or they could be fitness gaps. Maybe some of the biggest gaps we experience are relational gaps. I am probably at my very worst right before a flight. Super stressful packing to me. It's super stressful getting to the airport on time because it seems like we never allow enough time 
uh, in order to get there just safely and, and insanely. And so I'm, I'm a little on edge because I want everything to be right. And I'm unfairly probably trying to rush Jolene along. And I, because I want to get there and, you know, let's get to the destination and start having fun. Come on, let's have some fun. <laughs> and the traveling itself is not being fun for me. I love the destination. This traveling's not fun. So this was underscored to me several years ago when we were on a flight to Phoenix. We were going to a flight. And so we were in the car and our youngest daughter, Olivia, was with us. And we were headed to Mitchell in Milwaukee for the flight. And I don't know what, what possessed me, but halfway to Milwaukee, I leaned to Jolene and I said, it is, it is Mitchell, right? That's, is that the airport? So she pulls out her ticket and she says, oh my goodness, it's O'Hare. I said, okay, great. So I pull off the ex- next exit and get back on. And Jolene sometimes gets after me because I, I tend to tell stories um, about my driving. And I know I've done that a lot and that I sometimes like to go faster than I should. <laughs> and, but, so I apologize if that offends you, um, kind of. So then I'm, I'm back on the highway and I'm headed back south now toward O'Hare and we're already, you know, kind of late. And so I dropped them off at the, at the front there and then she and Olivia go on in and she texts me and says, hey, we're going to go on through security and, and go on to the gate and just, we'll just wait for you. So there's no way I'm paying $35 a night to park you know, in that, in that parking lot. So I, I went to long-term parking, which takes some more minutes, and wait for a shuttle uh, to take me back to the airport. And this was some years ago before security got even tighter. So now I'm at the airport, I'm looking at my watch, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, this is not good. Because the flight is really should be taking off like just in a couple of minutes. That's how late we are. So I'm running down the, the hallway of the airport, and when you know, it's, you know it's the last gate, right? You have to go all the way down to the very end where it's a dead end. And so I am running with my carry-on through the airport. I mean, I am, I am hurtling over poodles and small children at this point. And so I get there to the end, and the gate is empty. There's nobody there. And the door that I'm supposed to go through with my ticket is shut. And there's the Delta lady with the red scarf around her neck. And she says to me, are you Mr. Taylor? And I'm like, yes, I am Mr. Taylor. And she says, well, sir, the door is shut and we cannot open the door for you. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And then I said to her, where is my family? And she said, well, they went through the door without you. (laughs) And I'm like, in what galaxy is this appropriate behavior? Because there was a gap between the experience that I wanted to have and the one that I was having right at that moment. And there is often a gap between the life that you want and the one you're actually living. The book of Romans in the eighth chapter says it this way. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Same power that raised Jesus, that it took to raise Jesus from death and walk through a tomb door alive was not just a one-time thing. That power, it says, can live in you. That doesn't mean you get to be God and you get to wave a magic wand. It means that the power of God inhabits you and God wants to bring life to some of the dead spots in your life. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life, not maybe, not if. It says he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living (coughs) in you. Anybody ever thought to yourself, this is not how life's supposed to be? It's supposed to be better, it's supposed to be different? It's because we've all made mistakes and we've tried to change and we instituted new relationships and new patterns and, and new uh, plans and, and new everything, but you still end up with a gap. And the truth is, we can all look good on the outside, but on the inside, there are hurts. And on the inside, there are some regrets, because, but because of what happened on this day more than 2,000 years ago, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can live inside you. That is amazing. And the reason that these gaps exist is because of what the Bible calls sin or disobedience to God. The Bible says that we've all experienced that. In fact, in Romans 3, it says that all, 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 everybody in this room has sinned and frankly fallen short of the glory of God. I'm not here to judge you for what your sin is. That is not my job. That's God's job because I have enough to deal with right here. But here's it for sure. Your sins and my sins have separated us from God. That's super important. Because there isn't anything that you or I can do to bridge the separation on our own. The gap, the payment that you owe 
for your sin is enormous. There is no amount of good deeds. There is no amount of good errands or good works that you can do to cover the gap. But here's the great news. Jesus, the crucified Son of God, the perfect Son of God, he bridged the gap when he died on a cross for you because he loved you. He stood in your place, and by his death, he paid for the sins. He took care of them in full as the perfect sacrifice for us all. And now, whoever receives Jesus by faith into their heart, whoever decides to follow him, is forgiven. I have never thought about religion or church as just something you do on the weekend. Now, I've just always seen church through the lens of your life will only be better if you commit yourself to somebody bigger than you and greater than you, and if you go on a vibrant spiritual journey. It's one of the reasons that we named this church, Journey Church, because we try to think about this in steps. We try to think about this in processes to take people on spiritual journeys from where they are right now to where they could be and really where they want to be, which is why right now there's a three-step process that we have. If you are new to Jesus or if you come to Jesus today or if you just never, never done a 101 uh, with Jesus and what it means to be a Christ follower, we have a Follow Jesus course. You could take that before you're done today. You could sign up for that just on your phone even. There's a step two called growth track where it's learning about Journey Church. It's learning how, what your gifts are and how you could possibly be part of a team or how you could do life with people. And then there's a third step once you finish those. It's called DNA of a leader. Leadership just means influence. It doesn't mean that we're going to put you in charge of a, a thousand people. It means that you have influence in a circle in your own life. And so you can be in a small group and do DNA of a leader, or you can be on a Zoom group and do DNA of a leader, or if you choose, you can do it by yourself. But we want you to get all that God has for you because he has more than you could ever imagine. The Bible says as Jesus is crucified on a cross, he suspended there between two thieves. There's the three of them. They're hanging there side by side, and ultimately, Jesus cries out from the cross. He says, it is finished. The work that I've been sent here to do, it's done. I've, I've done the work, and he's taken down, and he's placed in a borrowed tomb, and there he lies, not for one day, not for two days, but for three days before he rises from the grave. And in his death and in his burial and in his resurrection, in the Friday, in the Saturday, and in the Sunday of life, Jesus is showing us processes, even then. He's showing us steps that are relevant to your life and to my life. And here's what 1 Peter says in the New Testament. He says, this is the kind of life that you have been invited into, the kind of life that Christ lived. He suffered everything that came his way so that you would know that it could be done and also know how to do it step by step. In other words, there's a process. There's a plan. There's a journey. And because in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus, Friday teaches us something, and Saturday teaches us something, and Sunday teaches us something. Let's start with Friday. Friday was the day and the door of pain. Because Jesus is brutally crucified on a cross by the, the most hideous form of capital punishment there is. He has spikes driven into his wrists and into his feet. They take a crown of thorns and they ram it onto his head. They take a spear and they thrust it into his side. He is mercilessly and brutally beaten and crucified. If you've ever seen the movie The Passion of the Christ, you know that that is a movie that you can only watch with one eye open. And it was a day of pain for Jesus. But here's a significant thing. Is that Jesus walked through a door of pain so that he could ultimately help you through yours. That's powerful. Because however much pain that you have endured in your life, Jesus endured more. He was crucified so that you could navigate whatever pain that you have had in your life. I know that we're all sitting here today all looking great and looking pretty. But in this room, there are people walking through a war. And that's why the word for Friday is warring. Some of you are going to walk back into a war today. This hour is just a breather for some people. 
They're headed back when they're done here. And that's why that word for today is warring. And some of you identify with that word because sometimes life pain isn't just one day. Sometimes life pain lasts, lasts for a season, sometimes for years. And there's physical pain, and that one's obvious. We all have physical pain, but physical pain is part of Jesus' story too. That means that Jesus understands because he went through pain. But if we, if we put all the collective pain in this room into one bucket, I, I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't even equal the pain that Jesus went through physically. But pain doesn't always stop at your body. There's also emotional pain. That's in this room too. And that has been as real for you, some of you, as any physical pain could be. Here's what the Bible says, that Jesus was despised. He was rejected. He was betrayed. Isaiah in the Old Testament calls him a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. His best friends and his best buddies, they forsook him. His, his closest advisors walked away, and as he's being crucified, those who knew him and loved him best bailed on him. You may have been betrayed. You may have been rejected or slandered, and those can hurt just as much as physical pain. There's discouragement. There's anxiety. There's even depression. Those are all real, and Jesus understands them all. But there's also relational pain. You might go, wait, Jesus, he had relational pain? He did. Did you know that Jesus' family was flat out crazy? You know, as he's being crucified on the cross, they're not down there on the cross going, wait a minute, wait, that guy up there, he's our brother. As he's teaching before he's crucified and he's teaching people in the crowds, his own family, he's saying, that guy's out of his mind. He's crazy. How many of you have someone in your family who's crazy? Anybody? Uh, are, you, are you sitting next to him right now? <laughs> and if you don't know who the crazy person in your family is, it's you, baby. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, some of you, you're in a Friday of life. There's pain. You're in a war. It might be physical pain. It might be emotional pain. It might be relational pain. It could be marital pain. It could be occupational pain or provisional pain. It could be spiritual pain. Here's what you should know one more time, is that Jesus walked through the door of Friday so you wouldn't have to navigate yours by yourself. And there is a lesson in your pain. You say, what? Wow, really? There's a lesson? Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8 says, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And so there is a purpose and there is a reason in your pain to bring God glory and for your ultimate good. So if you're in a Friday of life, know that God uses everything. Some of you are not in a Friday. You're, you're not in a season of warring. You're not. And for you, there is a Saturday. And Saturday is the door in the day of confusion. And for Jesus' disciples, it couldn't have been more confusing because he's in a grave, he's dead. And they're thinking, they're not thinking on Saturday. They're not thinking, yippee, tomorrow it's Easter, he is risen. That's not what they're thinking. They're thinking our master and our leader and our savior, he's dead. We expected him to overthrow Rome and start a kingdom and have a throne. And in fact, we were gonna be his vice president and his cabinet. We were gonna be part of it all. But the Bible says that on Saturday, a lot of Jesus' followers just went back to their old jobs. The Jesus ride was over. And so Saturday is a day of confusion for the disciples. But maybe confusion isn't totally the right word for you. Because the word for Saturday is also the word waiting. Maybe that describes you better. Because there's a hope that you have and there's a dream in your life that you're just waiting to be fulfilled and you're waiting. There are answers, that, there are questions that you have about life and about you and about your family or about your situation that just have gone unanswered. And if you're not in a day of confusion, you are in a day of waiting. And when we're confused, we want answers. And over the years, I think maybe that might be the most common question I've been asked as a pastor. They say, PK, why? Why is this happening or why is this happening to me? I don't always have the answers because I don't always know why. 
I don't think we will know all the wise this side of heaven. Because I'm like you. I have questions. I still do. I don't understand everything about sickness. I don't understand everything about disease. I don't, I don't understand all the personal heartbreak that people experience. Here's what I know. I know that God is good. And when we are confused, we want answers. But we can also start to doubt when we're confused. And some of you have heard all the things that I'm saying up here before. You've heard all these words a hundred times, a thousand times before. But you still doubt. You still aren't sure. You aren't convinced that even that any of this is real, even though that you're here. And even though you're watching and sitting at home online, you're not convinced. You're in the Saturday of life, just waiting, waiting for your answers to be answered. And I, the truth is, all, all, all the doubting that you have hasn't helped you either. You're still confused. And some people are just frustrated. I mean, they've just given up. The door's been open so long, I, I just feel alone. I, you you want to step in the shower and just pull the curtain closed. But, but I want you to know that the right person or another person is not going to solve your issue. A better job or more money or income is not going to solve your issue. No achievement and no purpose and no perfect answer is going to solve your deep down issue. Remember I said that God has a purpose in everything? What's the purpose in the Saturday? The Bible says that your goal is to get close, 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 close to the one who loves you, to draw near to Jesus and he will draw near to you, to worship him and to love him and come close to him. And there's a psalm written in the Old Testament by a man named Asaph. And in the psalm, he's super upset because he sees the wicked getting ahead. And he sees people who are not wicked and people who are good, maybe not doing so well. And the psalm writer goes, I'm confused, God. I'm here trying to be holy and I'm try here trying to be good and I'm here trying to be pure. But I see people who, who are bad people. They seem to be doing better than I am. You are not helping me at all. And the psalm writer says in Psalm 73, I tried to understand the why. Why the wicked prosper? What, what, a, what a difficult task that is. Not until I went into your sanctuary, God. Not until I went into your presence. Not until I got close to you. Not until I began to attach myself to you did I finally understand. It's been some years ago now, but in 2008, and those of you who've been around for a while will recognize 2008 as the year that the bottom dropped out of the economy. Remember that? People lost jobs. There were all kinds of thousands of homes foreclosed on across our country. It was a brutal time for many people. Jolene and I had a home here in Kenosha in the Pleasant Prairie area, and we decided that we were going to build a, sell that house and build a different house. 2008. As soon as we had dug a hole in the ground, everything fell apart. Couldn't sell that house, couldn't sell that house, two homes for, I don't remember, honey, like 18 months to two years. It was crushing. To mortgage payments, to tax bills, to electric bills, to water bills, to everything, everything, everything for almost two years. I was in a Saturday of life. I was super confused. God, I'm, I'm a good person. I love you. I was hurt. I was angry. I was scared. But when you come close to God, and when you get in his presence, and when you realize that he loves you and he has a plan for you, and you really draw near to him, here comes some hope. Here comes some strength. Here comes some joy. Here comes some peace, if you let him. But I want you to hear this. There is a Sunday available to you. And Sunday, Sunday is the day and the door of power. And put a different way, Sunday is the day of winning because Jesus won this for you. He won this fight. This fight isn't yours. This fight is his. He already did it. He already won it. And some of you, you're in a Friday of life. There's pain. There's war. You're walking back into it in just a few minutes. For some of you, you're in a Saturday of life and there's some doubt. 
there's some confusion in your life. You're just waiting. This door is standing wide open. But I want you to know <laughs> that this is the door. Door number three. This is it. Take door number three. It is the day of power. It is the day of victory because Jesus walked out of the grave alive for you. The same power that lives in him can live in you. You don't get to be God. Don't make that mistake. But he said that his power inhabits the praises. You say, PK, well, that's the door I want. How do I get this door? Simple. The answer is found in one and only one word, just one word. The answer is in this word. The word is Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So, you know I was going to say that, right? I mean, it's Easter and it's Sunday, and all, all the right answers on Easter and Sunday is Jesus. If you answer Jesus, you get it right. But that was super lukewarm, friends. Like, wow. So I'm going to take, that, take it off the screen, and we're going to try it again, okay? Because the answer to your issue and the answer to your problem and the answer to your dilemma and the answer to your unanswered questions and the answer to your situation and the answer to your circumstance and the answer to your thing, the answer to your thing, the answer to your thing is found in all, one and only one word, and that word is Jesus. That's the answer to your problem all day, every day, each day. That's way better. And Jesus says in the go- last scripture in the Gospel of John, you do not have to wait for the end. I am right now resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, and you will, will live. Not here, there. And then, and everyone who lives right now, believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Not here, but there. Ultimately does not die. And then the the final, final question is, do you believe this? And that's really the question, isn't it? Do you believe this? Don't just take it from me. Let Fidel tell you. Because Fidel walked through a Friday of life where he was in pain and he was warring in his life. Fidel walked through a Saturday of life where he was just confused. He was just waiting. And God, what are you going to do? Are you going to show up? But ultimately, Fidel found the third door. And Jesus came into his life and set him free. I want you to hear from him. Here he is. You know, I start off a good kid, you know, A's and B's and high school basketball, you know, player. Um, was very good, wanted to go to the NBA. You know, basketball was always a passion of mine, and I wanted to uh, to do that for, for a lifestyle. So when they when they told me, hey, you're kicked off the basketball team, I really felt betrayed. You know, I felt like uh, they gave up on, on a good student. And I started rebelling because of one fight that I had in school. And so it led me to, to think, you know what, this isn't for me then. And I went to go do other things. And at that moment, people were enticing me like, hey, come, you know, come party with us, come party with us, you know. Uh, so I, I dipped and dabbed in that and all of a sudden it led me into uh, to a whole different world, you know. So, um, so I decided to, to join the Land Kings. There was nothing to be proud of, but at that moment I thought I was proud because I was looking for security. I was looking for acceptance, you know, after being kicked off of uh, the basketball team. I had thought that's where, uh, that's where my role was leading to, you know. And which you know, in, in some cases people do. In some cases uh, people go through a hurt and, and uh, they think this is, this, is, this is no longer my road. My road is, is this way. And so that's the decision I was taking. There was a point in my life that that um, I, you know, started becoming, you know, a doll to me in 2011. I, I started picking up a Bible and I started trying to read it. But every time I tried to read the Bible, uh, someone would come and like, hey, I got this joint or hey, I got this, you know, whatever, this 12 pack or something. And I would close the book and I would, uh, I would start doing that. You know? I became homeless. Uh, I lost, you know, my family. Um, I lost everything. I was sleeping in my car. I was sleeping at a friend's house. They were laughing at me. Um, and this is, uh, this is in the midst of me, uh, you know, becoming something that I wasn't. And, and they were still uh, laughing at me, you know. 
So uh, there was a point where I was at a party and uh, I kept hearing this voice every time I pick up, Fidel, what are you doing? This is not who you are. But I would drink and I, you know, a 12 pack in and I wasn't drunk, you know, and you know, so much weed and, and uh, so much cocaine and I wasn't high, you know. And, and so when I went home and uh, I got on my knees and I didn't even know if I was talking to God, you know, but I was just like, God, what, what is, I don't even know if you're alive. I don't even know if this is who you are or what you want from me, but you know, I, I'm tired, I'm, I'm done, and I don't know what the heck to do anymore. I don't even know if you're hearing me right now. Uh, and I continued doing what I was doing in my life, you know? And then uh, two weeks later, um, you know, was a break and breaking point. Uh, you know, I had caught a DUI and uh, and I was done from that moment. You know, I cried out to the Lord in, in, the, in the jail cell. And as a game banger, I was trying to reach out for a family. And a family, and somebody who said, a family that said they have me as family wasn't truly a family, you know. It was just an identity that I was looking for. And I found that in Jesus, in Jesus Christ, you know. I found my identity in Him. There's only two ways to to get out, you know, you get beat up and not many people survive that or you go, you hide, you know, and until they, they either find you or they don't find you, you know. Um, but I went with the courage of Christ, you know, I mean, God gave me the courage and and uh, I told him, I said, hey, I'm, I'm in for Jesus and I want to gather us all in a circle and I want to pray for us all. And we did. They all huddled up in a circle together and I prayed for every single one of them. And uh, while they were accepting my, my resignation as, as a gang leader, uh, I went from uh, gang banging, womanizing, drug dealing, uh, homelessness, no money, uh, no house, uh, losing my family, uh, to where God has uh, given me a, a career now. And, um, and I got a car and, and I got a home. I have a beautiful wife. And, uh, and she's, she's amazing. And, uh, and now I, I got a beautiful daughter. And I have an amazing family in Christ. And, and none of my family in Christ will leave me. They're always there for me. And so whether it's good or bad, um, I can say that God truly, uh, truly changed the man who I was into the man who I am now. Like Fidel, the decision that is in front of you right now, when, when the Bible says, do you believe this? This is not just a Sunday decision. It's not just an Easter decision. Where you go, yeah, I did that thing with the pastor when I went that Easter. This is a life decision. Because Jesus addresses this, the Fridays of life. He addresses the pain. He addresses the war. He said, I, I, I warred for you. I'm fighting the battle for you. He addresses the confusion. He addresses the waiting. He addresses the answers that you just can't quite get answered. He says, I, I'm the answer. Because he offers a doorway for you to walk through that your life will be changed, not just for a few hours, but forever. And there is a gift of eternal life that you don't get that here, but when your life ends and it's going to, there is a home for you, the Bible says. The just as good news is that your life gets to change now. You don't have to wait until eternity for that to change. He says, I offer you life now, today. And the process is not complicated. It's saying, Lord, I believe you. I have sinned in my life. I have been disobedient. The Bible already tells us everybody's done that. But he has offered a way out for you. So God loved the world so much that he sent his only son who died on a cross for your sins that you might be free. And so if you confess your sins and if you put your hope and your trust in him, the Bible says he comes into your life and changes you forever. So, so powerful. 
And I believe that there would be many in the house today who, who would say, hey, that, that's me. I, I, I'm ready for that today. So bow your heads for a minute, close your eyes, and this is how we'll close. I'm going to offer that to you. I, I don't really, I don't have the power to give it. It's Jesus who brings it into your life. And so in just a minute, I'm going to count to three. And if you want to receive Jesus, if you, if you would say today, I want to follow Jesus, I'm ready to do that. I'm ready to say, I, I've had some disobedience in my life and I need grace today. Jesus will come into your life and make you new today. It's the first step in a grand, grand, grand big process that God wants to take you through. But how many would say, in just a moment, I want to receive Jesus into my life today. I want to follow him. I want to be part of the family of God. I want you to raise your hand in just a moment. Hi, so I can see it on the count of three. One, two, three. Would you raise your hand all over the place? I want to follow Jesus. I want to make commit commitment to him in the balcony. I see all tons of you. Thank you for that. Thank you for raising your hands. God, you see the hands today and you see the hearts. God, I can just see hands that are raised and I can't even see them all. But God, you see every single heart represented. And so, Lord, I believe you're going to come into people's lives today and change people from the inside out. So here's what I'm going to ask. Every single person in the house, as your heads are still bowed, I'm going to ask every person who is a Christ follower that you're, you're going to pray after me with boldness and strength. You're going to be an encouragement to those who are sitting next to you and in front of you who hear your voice. Those of you who have your hands raised or they were raised a second ago, I'm going to ask you just by faith, you're going to pray a prayer. The prayer is not magical. The prayer is just a process to get you started. But I want you to pray this prayer with me, all of us, praying it together. Are you ready? Everybody together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I confess that I have sinned, and I give that to you today. I believe that you're the Son of God, crucified on a cross for me. So come into my life today. Change me. Make me new. Start me over. I want to follow you. I want to be your disciple. And now help me walk with you every single day for the rest of my life in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Let's celebrate that together. This is what the Bible says that heaven is doing right now, celebrating with us. Praise the Lord. So good. Thanks for praying that prayer with us today. There are steps forward for you now. We're not going to just leave you. We're going to encourage you in your next steps with Jesus. I know Eric's coming in a minute just to say some final words. Don't leave just yet. But I want to thank you again for praying that prayer. I want to thank you for spending your Easter weekend with us. Uh, God bless you. We love you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Can we celebrate again for those people who raised their hands to dedicate their lives to Christ? Heaven is joyful right now. We are celebrating with this victory that we found in Christ. Thank you for those of you who've taken a bold step. You've taken a bold step in this new phase of life. Welcome, welcome, you are in the family. Now, some of you may have not taken that, so you might be on the edge. We all walk through that door of pain, of worrying, of confusion. But God wants us to walk through that door of hope. And for some of you, those of you, you took that step, amen. But there's some of you who are still on the fence. For some of you, this is, being here is the only heaven you're probably seeing right now. Don't let it be. Don't let it be the only piece of Jesus that you feel, the only piece of Jesus that you experience. Take that step because you, you will never regret it, I promise you. Anyone who knows, know. If you know, you know, right? Walk through that door. If you have given your life to Jesus, or if you will, maybe in the next day or so in a few hours, I want you to text J-R-N-Y to 94,000, 94,000. We want to walk this walk out with you because we can't do it alone. Again, if you know, you know, right? We can't do it alone. We want to walk this out with you.
Amen. And also, I want to continue to extend the invitation. We are here every Sunday, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Come. Because it's, it's an ongoing process. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for celebrating Resurrection Sunday with us. Have a great and blessed weekend. Amen.